Upon entering college, many students set out to become medical doctors. One thing that students are often confused about is what is the best pre-med major and what is pre-med. This video will go over what it means to be pre-med and the steps you should take to get into medical school. Students who have aspirations of becoming a medical doctor take a collection of math and science courses that prepare them for medical school. Although there are a few schools that have a specific pre-med major, most schools will not. You will just major in something else like one of the sciences that prepares you for med school by having you complete all the prereqs. Chemistry and biology majors have historically been considered the pre-med route. However, this is not a requirement. In fact, med schools have even seen an increase in the number of liberal arts majors that apply to med school. Beyond just high MCAT scores and good grades in math and science, admission boards want to see that a candidate is passionate about their field of study. Admission boards want to see applicants that can think outside the box, think critically, have a passion for problem solving, and meet the prerequisites for their school. As of 2010, the Association of American Medical Colleges reported that medical schools accepted 43% of the biological sciences majors, 47% of the physical sciences majors, 51% of humanities majors, and 45% of social science majors. One of the reasons why so many applicants apply as biology majors is simply because they find biological science is very interesting and it's convenient because of its overlap with med school requirements. Provided you meet the prerequisites and do well in all of your core classes, you can major in whatever interests you most. That being said, according to the Association of American Medical Colleges, the five most popular pre-med majors in 2015 to 2016 were biological sciences, physical sciences, social sciences, humanities, and other. If you decide to major in liberal arts, you'll just have to be a little more creative in how you fit in your prereq classes. If you're preparing for med school, you will need to take one year of biology with lab, one year of general chemistry with lab, one year of organic chemistry with lab, one year of physics with lab, one year of English, and one semester of calculus. Those classes are already included in majors like biology and chemistry, so you don't need to add to your required courses. But again, with liberal arts, you have to actively make sure you add some of those on top of your required classes. And recently, many medical schools such as John Hopkins University are now requiring students to complete 24 credit hours of humanities, social, and behavior science courses. As mentioned before, universities want to make sure their applicants are well-rounded, communicate well, and are concerned with the human condition, not just the human body. Humanities courses give students a broad understanding of the human condition and increase diverse cultural understanding and improve the social environment in our world. Three important things to consider are one, to choose a major you enjoy, two, to maintain a minimum of a 3.5 GPA with that major, and three, make sure you can fall back on your undergraduate major if you don't go into medical school. Make grades your number one concern. It is important to have a high GPA in order to be a strong medical school candidate. Whatever major you choose, make your performance in the classroom your main focus. If you are planning to go into medical school, right from day one you need to take college seriously. If you happen to have a bad semester or a low GPA, it is important that you show an upward trend in your academics to show you are increasingly serious about your studies. You should strive to be an exemplary student. Attend all of your classes each time they meet, schedule lots of time for reading and studying, and don't wait to get help the minute you realize you are struggling with any of your subjects. Your grades in biology, chemistry, physics, math, abbreviated by BCPM, are greatly important and if your grades are not high enough, your application will not even make it through the first round of cuts. Keep in mind that medical schools are incredibly competitive and even the most accepting universities only accept 8% of applicants. This is an important statistic to keep in mind to keep you focused on your goal. Remind yourself that med schools specifically have their pre-med coursework as weed out courses in order to guarantee a high quality applicant. So now in terms of letters of recommendation, as you go through college you should begin identifying college professors you enjoy learning from and do your best to get to know them and learn if they are accessible to offer guidance or answer questions. You will eventually need letters of recommendation from individuals who know you and your work, and one of your professors might agree to write such a letter. Look for opportunities to meet alumni who have gone on to medical school or those who are working now as physicians. You can learn a lot about what to expect in medical school by talking to someone who has been there themselves. Your fourth year in college is also a good time to start putting together a draft of your resume. Leading up to putting together your resume, you should get involved on your campus and community and look for opportunities that can develop personal, leadership, research, and clinical skills. 
It is highly recommended you join any pre-health career clubs on your campus and get on the mailing list so you will receive notices about events and activities. Approach the campus health clinic to look for volunteer positions there, and if your school has a research facility, check for opportunities to assist in some way. Beyond just volunteering, med school admission boards want you to show that you engage in leadership roles as a part of your volunteer experience. You can gather information on how to build a strong resume using search engines, business forums, career centers, or pay experts to help you draft your resume. In addition, it is important you properly prepare for your interview with the medical school review board. You want to show that you have done your research, display why you would be a good candidate for their school, and remain calm and well-spoken. The best way to feel confident for these interviews is by preparing your answers ahead of time and rehearsing with your family and friends. Lastly, you will want to keep up to date on upcoming requirements and deadlines that are part of the med school applications process. You will want to take the MCAT your junior year. There are two factors to consider when deciding on the timing of your medical college admissions test. Whether you plan to take the exam more than once and how prepared you feel. If you think you might want to take the test more than once, plan to make your first attempt before May 1st of your junior year. This will give you plenty of time to get your scores and make a decision about retesting. Some of you might be thinking, what if I'm not prepared yet? If you don't feel prepared academically or there are elements in your personal life that are making it difficult for you to focus, put your efforts into your coursework and on getting in a good place mentally for the test. It would be perfectly fine if you waited until June or July to take the exam. Even people who take the exam in August can apply during that cycle. Overall, when preparing for med school, it is important to plan ahead, do well in school, and don't wait until the last minute on important deadlines. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.